In this video, I'm gonna be cooking some of the best Wagyu in the entire world, and a type of meat that I'm even more excited for, Kobe beef. Everybody says Wagyu thinking that that's the best of the best, but no, Kobe is actually a level above. But as I often like to do, we're gonna throw a twist in this, because we're gonna be cooking all of it on a hot Himalayan salt rock. This thing right here is a giant Himalayan pink salt slab. It's super, super heavy, but it doesn't even come close to how heavy this bad boy right here is. And frankly, I like the pink color on this one a lot better. But wait just a second, before we get moving, I'm going to politely ask that you toss a quick like on the video. I cannot tell you how much me and the whole team appreciate it, and it really helps more than you could ever know. So, I'm gonna give you just a quick little second. If you won't like it for me, like it for Pesto. For now, we're gonna give you just a quick second to go down and smack that like button. If you do, Pesto might get to try some Wagyu later. Today we'll be cooking with an amazing spread of different proteins because I really want to compare these different things and see how it goes on a hot stove. I mean, who would go to the market and buy any of these things and then decide to cook them on a giant piece of salt? Only me, that's who. First, we have some absolutely gorgeous salmon. When I choose my salmon, I really don't mess around. And as you can see, I have a perfect portion right here. What I look for in salmon is similar to what I look for in a piece of Wagyu, that amazing marbling of the fat that hasn't been all messed up and butchered by the person that broke down and filleted the fish. And as you can see, this right here is perfect. What are you doing? You're fired, get out. Next, we have some amazing scallops. Now, believe it or not, I actually really don't like cooked scallops all that much. I prefer them raw. And if you haven't had scallop ceviche before, I urge you to try it at some point. It's a completely different texture and mouthfeel, and it is absolutely delicious. Now we have some of the thickest, thickest bacon you've ever seen. And when I say thick, I mean with a bunch of cues at the end, almost as thick as me. I really wanted to take this bacon and sear it off on our hot stone to see what this would turn out as. Today, let's treat this bacon like we would any other protein and really give it some love and care. Now is when things get exciting. Notice that I'm leaving these in the packages right now because I really don't want to start touching this Wagyu beef with my hands and messing it up. But this right here is a Miyazaki Gyu tenderloin. This is the best of the best Wagyu all the way from Japan. And as you probably have guessed, my friends at the Wagyu shop. Now this right here, although it does look slightly less vibrant, is a Kobe tenderloin. This is Japanese Wagyu beef, but it's the the best of the best in terms of Wagyu beef, and I cannot wait to try this. I don't think I've ever tried this before in my life, so I'll really try to bring you through what that tastes like. Speaking of Kobe, this right here is a Japanese Wagyu Kobe ribeye. This bad boy right here is gonna run you almost $400, so you don't wanna waste even the tiniest bit. And last but not least, we have a beautifully marbled Motobo Gyu strip loin. Again, this is Wagyu beef if you haven't figured it out, and it's a slightly different cut from a different farm and location. I'm super excited to try this one. And one last really exciting thing before we begin. If you are watching this right now, this means that we have officially launched my new salt company, Osmo. I've been working on this salt company behind the scenes for almost a year. And what you're looking at right here are some of the best salts that you will ever taste. And I promise you that. We have black truffle, mesquite smoked, flaky white, this amazing pink Himalayan salt rock that you can grate over whatever you'd like, and then flaky black and roasted garlic. To be honest, I can't even really pick out my favorites, but these are truly the finest and most delicious salts I have ever worked with. Click the link in the description or the pinned comment to grab some salt before it runs out, because trust me, all of this is going to sell out, and I truly would not be surprised if it's gone by today. And in the meantime, we're gonna be trying all of these salts and some of the different proteins we're gonna cook today on the hot salt slab, just to see how well different pairings work. Oh, and one last thing, you know this ab absolutely beautiful Damascus knife that I've used in every single YouTube video up to this point. We are going to randomly stick my knife that I'm holding right here in one of the boxes of the first thousand orders. So click below and order and you may just have my exact chef's knife. All right, let's get cooking. Now at this point, it's time to heat up our salt rock and this is gonna take a little bit of time. I already have things going over low and it's actually quite warm. Cut the cam for a quick second. You know how they have this in spots? You can like lie down, it's freaking. I'm gonna have this going over quite low heat for about 10 to 15 minutes to let this slowly come up to temperature. We don't wanna completely shock the salt rock and have it crack. Trust me, it's not fun for anybody when that happens. We'll come back to revisit this in about 15 minutes and slowly turn off that heat until we've gotten this thing as hot as we can possibly get it. Now, normally I'd be the first one to tell you not to put anything except for salt on a piece of Wagyu, but I recently went to a restaurant and had Wagyu with some roasted garlic as well as classic old salt. It was at a Korean barbecue place and it was genuinely one of the best things I I remember tasting for quite some time. So to start, I'm gonna go ahead and put some roasted garlic salt all over this beautiful piece of Wagyu. I have a really good feeling this is gonna be one of the best bites of meat I have ever experienced. And if the cameraman here can make it through the video without being fired, maybe he'll get to taste it too. Once we've rolled this all the way around in the salt, making sure the entire thing is fully and evenly coated, we are ready to sear this off on our Himalayan salt block. Now normally I wouldn't put any sort of oil on something that I'm about to cook Wagyu over, but here I'm gonna do it just because we're using a salt block and I wanna keep this big be nice and lubed up. 
No. As you can see, I've already tested out a scallop here, which is why we've left that mark. And all these proteins will build up a nice patina as we cook more of them on here. To start, I'll go down with just a little bit of oil right in the middle here, and then we sear. Listen to that amazing hot sizzling that's occurring right away. I can already see this Wagyu tensing up, and I can also smell that absolutely incredible roasted garlic salt. One of the best smells you could possibly dream of. At this point, we've got a really beautiful crust on the bottom of this Wagyu, and then we'll flip it over and do the exact same thing on the other side. Now finally, once this absolute beauty is done, you can see we have a really nice sizzly exterior. An amazing, perfect crust across the entire thing. But last but not least, let's hit it with a little bit more of our roasted garlic salt. Because the most important thing with this piece of meat right here, other than the fact that we're trying to cook it perfectly, is to make absolutely sure that we nail that roasted garlic flavor. It's not easy cleaning off these salt rocks, but I'm gonna try to spray it and release some of that dark brown patina that's sitting on the bottom. As I spray and mist it, the smells that are coming off of this are incredible. Since we're already cooking these filets, I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of my classic white flaky salt, then evenly cover our entire Kobe filet mignon. And once this beauty is evenly coated, place it down to sear. This is just sizzling uncontrollably right now. And I have to say, after doing a test with both different salts, Osmo's white flaky salt really does a great job at coating a nice piece of meat. And because it's a little bit smaller than your average flaky salt, it sits flush up against the meat and cooks really, really evenly and nicely. At this point, I think this piece of filet mignon is ready to rest. I already got a little flaky salt in this bad boy, but let's be bougie and finish him off with just a little bit of this black truffle salt. This black truffle salt right here will blow your mind. Look at me right now. I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you. It's time to cut this beautiful filet mignon open. And right here is the moment of truth. Hashtag nailed it. Let's cut some really, really nice slices. Thick enough that you get a nice bite, but not too thick. We don't want any steak that's as thick as me. Now, we may have already overdone it with the salt, but just theoretically, if you wanna be super, super fancy and grate some salt over literally whatever you want, we've made a very small batch of these Himalayan pink salt chunks with a little salt grater that you can grate over anything. Watch. But I think it's safe to say that at this point, these have more than enough seasoning. So I think it's time to try. First, I wanna try a little bite of this beautiful piece right here. Notice how easily this tears apart. Here we go. The black truffle, oh my word. It's almost like in this black truffle salt, there's truffle butter, and that truffle all just melts across the steak once it sits on there. And it's literally absurd. I feel like I am somehow actually eating a black truffle and steak hybrid right now. And of course, the Wagyu itself is beyond good. Nothing can be better than what I'm tasting right now. Let's hang up all the pots and pans, all the chef's knives, everything. We're done here. Now for this other one, because I'm really excited to see whether or not I actually get that roasted garlic flavor. So here we go. These are both absurd. Some of the best meat that I've ever, ever, ever had. Everybody watching, I'll be honest with you. Sometimes I get a little bit sick of Wagyu. I have so much of it around and I am lucky to have that. Because of the amount of Wagyu I have, given a regular steak and a piece of Wagyu, I'd normally right now choose a regular steak because that is what I have less of. But this right here, I could eat a million servings of. You wanna taste a little bite? Mm. All right, I'm gonna feed you. Go ahead, go ahead. Try it out. Mm. You're fired. Now it's time to cook up the rest of these things, and do not worry, I have not forgotten about this bacon. In fact, I'm extremely excited to see how this super thick bacon cooks on top of our salt slab. But first, we're gonna season it up a little bit more with this mesquite smoked salt. Think of everything you love about summer barbecuing and grilling. That is what this salt tastes like. It is the most elegant smoky flavor I've tried to date, and we tried hundreds and hundreds of smoked salts to get to this one right here. Make sure to season the other side of that bacon, and then we'll set it aside. Next, our salmon. Like I said, that right there is a nice, nice piece of salmon. We're gonna go over the whole piece of salmon with some white flaky salt, but perhaps most important in my opinion is getting the skin. We wanna put plenty of salt on that skin so it draws out all the moisture, thereby allowing us to get a really nice crispy skin salmon, which again, I am super curious to see whether or not we can do on the pink salt slab. Now for our other types of Wagyu, we're gonna go in and cut out nice strips of it. Strips as well as squares are my two favorite ways to cook Wagyu. We'll hit this with just some of our regular salt, and because we don't wanna salt those scallops until the second before we hit them on the heat, we're ready to cook the rest. It's time for something I've been waiting for this whole day. Cooking bacon on a big slab of salt. I'm gonna layer out about three of these pieces and just let them do their thing. Just listen to that amazing hot sizzle. We'll wait just a few moments to let that golden brown crust form on each side, but already I'm smelling that incredible smokiness, perhaps a tiny touch of maple, and of course, the classic smell of bacon fat. And now it's time. We can flip that amazing bacon over and look at that amazing sizzle that we've gotten on it. This right here is going to be some flavorful, flavorful bacon. The fat is dripping everywhere and my kitchen is surely gonna be a mess. But you know what? 
I don't care. As they sizzle, let's hit them with a little bit more mesquite smoked salt. And now it's time that we take that bacon off and let it rest. This bacon is cooked to absolute perfection, leaving just enough fat at those edges that will have that nice chewiness, but then having that really crispy texture throughout. But let's act quickly, because we're gonna put the scallops on right away. The scallops and bacon go together like me and my cameraman. <laughs> For these scallops, we're gonna salt them, but then very quickly go right onto that salt rock. Never season your scallops more than just a minute or two before you cook them, because it dries them out and it'll make them hard and rubbery. Now, we'll try to get that nice golden brown crust. Once all those scallops are really nice and sizzly, check out that golden brown crust we got in the bottom. Now, we only have to lightly kiss them on the other side just to barely finish up their cooking, and then these scallops are done. It's fantastic how great of a crust we can get from this Himalayan salt rock, but keep in mind, I'm cooking at an extremely high temperature right now, and my whole kitchen is pretty smoked up. So if you're gonna do this at home, I'd suggest putting it on a grill and maybe doing it outside. While this is still piping hot, I'm gonna go down right away with my pieces of Wagyu, getting a really nice crust on each piece. Now once each of these pieces of Wagyu has a nice crust, just like this, flip those over to get crust on the other side. Again, we want to make sure these are cooked properly and not overcooked, of course. So make sure you have a really hot stone to start and not searing for too long. And now last but not least, what I've been waiting for this entire time, can we get a perfect crispy skin piece of salmon on a Himalayan pink salt hot stone? Wait just a moment here and you'll find out. Now after quite some time of the salmon sitting here, I can just tell by the sound, listen, that we've gotten a nice crispy skin, but let's check it out and make sure it's not burned. Boom. No, this right here is not burned. Let me show you. If you think back to just a few seconds ago, this part of the salmon and the scales there are a lot darker. This right here is perfect. All we need now is just a minute or two on the other side, and while the fish may stick at first, it will eventually release itself, and then we've cooked everything. And it's time to try these last few things out. If we wanna step things up just a tad bit more while the salmon is cooking, I'm gonna go around this with just a little bit of lemon juice, then really soak that in with the salmon to spread around all that flavor. Now that right there is going to be a delicious piece of salmon. So obviously we have a great big spread of things right here, but first I wanna cut into this salmon right here, because I wanna make sure we nailed that. We already know we got the crispy skin. But is it perfectly cooked? That's the real question here. One way to find out. Voila. Now I have to say, the colors on the camera do seem a little bit weird to me, but I hope you can see that in the center we have what is essentially some raw salmon, which is perfect. Because immediately outwards from that, we have a nice even layer of cooking that goes all the way up to that crispy skin on the top. I mean, just look at that salmon. For now, a little bite. That's so juicy. Now, time to taste that bacon. Here we go. Mm, I'm serious right now. Those mesquite crystals are what really make it. They give this really nice, perfect crunch. And the salt is such a shape that it holds perfectly, almost like a little crystal of sugar. Now that is some good bacon. I'm gonna call this little guy right here my hero scallop, even though he's probably the smallest one. This right there is what you want your scallops to look like. And while this is still a better sear than what I see most people get, this kind of pale, very lightly brown interior is what most people's scallops look like. If you're gonna buy something this expensive, start with a super, super, super hot pan to get this nice, thick, beautiful crust. The crust on something like a scallop is everything in my opinion, but let's take a bite. It's soft, it's buttery, it's got a perfect, perfect texture. And I don't know if you can see, but it pulls apart almost like nice pulled pork. That is a very, very tasty scallop. Last but not least, we have to try out this Wagyu. I'm not gonna make you wait, let's dive in. Just look at that fat that drips off when I squeeze this. This Wagyu is truly, truly special. It's an explosion of fat and oil in your mouth when you bite into each piece, but oil and fat in the best possible way. Words that I simply do not possess in my vocabulary would be needed to describe that bite. Now, one last little thing. Now, as promised, you all smacked that like button. So Pesto gets to try a piece of Kobe beef and look how much he likes it. So much, in fact, that he's using both hands to grab onto it and he will not let it go. Everybody, look how happy you made this little guy. Now, I wanna give everyone who watched the video a great big thank you, but I want to give everyone one last reminder to not forget to grab some Osmo salt. I mean, we got so much to offer, and look at this. We even have black flaky salt. The point is, we got salt for everybody. We have so many different types of salt, I couldn't even use all of those in that video. But I really mean it when I want to say how hard I've worked on this company for so, so long to really nail down all of these incredible flavors. I'm never going to mess around with food that's not truly incredible in my mind. And all of these salts, other than of course the plain ones, are so incredibly complex. I mean, that roasted garlic salt alone literally tastes like if you put a bunch of garlic cloves in the oven with some olive oil, salt, and pepper, beautifully roasted them till that chewiness and that glaze comes out, and then combine that perfectly into little salt granules. It's incredible. Go down and check out our brand new website, which just launched today, and I'll see you next time.